Hey, can you pronounce my name? Uh, Vishnu uh, uh, 4507, right? Why are you posting videos so late or the next day? That beer is getting to you or what? Uh, you got me, dude. Drop the like right after the slammed in the wall comment. Haha. -ha. And yeah, that's the idea, dude. Thanks. That's right. It's that time of the week. I am Jaime Rivera. This is Pocket Now. And this is the Pocket Now Daily Recap for last week. So on Monday, I asked you if you thought that Samsung's solution was the connected home, as the rumors were back then, that Samsung was going to have a corporate shakeup, changing CEOs and everything because of the bad performance. We have 541 comments out of which Danny Fallis says, Samsung should keep with the Note 4 design, remove stupid voicing features, and stop making of whatever million variations, WTF. Just stick to the Note lineup and the S and the S Mini, that's it. Stop creating millions of different phones, and I agree with you, probably one of the worst problems with the Galaxy brand right now is how diluted it is in so many different variations of products, and that's really not something positive. And Stefane says, remove TouchWiz, get some engineers, engineers, whatever, I do math, for build quality. That's what Samsung needs. You know, I partially agree with you. Um, design is getting better. Uh, TouchWiz definitely needs to go, but the average user doesn't really care about most of these things. And uh, that's where I feel that Samsung is missing the idea, and hopefully they'll figure it out. And Carly Johnston says, Samsung is clearly in trouble now. The world is tired of laggy Band-Aid phones. With a UI from 2009, you are so right. I love your comment, probably one of the best of the week, and you had a lot of really good comments as well in the rest of the week. Um, Samsung really needs to up its ante in design. It's been years since whatever touch was became famous. Now it's time for a change, good point. Then on Tuesday, I asked you, what do you think about Apple's current success? The company had just reached the market capitalization of $700 billion, a record. Uh, and it's really crazy for what they do. Uh, we have 854 comments out of which Grammar Nazi says, Apple just keeps getting better and better. I mean, 700 billion, that's just insane. And yes, they do deserve it. They make the best phones and tablets out there. No one else even comes close. Uh, I don't agree with that. There's a lot of marketing hype here. Hey, I'm an Apple products user. Look at what I have. But uh, that doesn't really mean that I consider that everything that Apple does is perfect. And I partially agree. They do put a lot of attention to detail in a lot of things, but they do miss out on others. And Gustavo Rivas says, I think Apple has really good products, but the lack of customization and ultra overpriced products uh, and a price tag there here in Brazil makes uh, me think twice if it's really worth it. Um, Sadly, the problem you have in Brazil is pertinent to Brazil. And sure, it happens in other Latin American countries, but then you go to the United States and every iPhone costs the same as every Galaxy phone, so it doesn't really apply everywhere. Enrique Estrada says, it's just the brand. The iPhone without the Apple logo is less than $230. Slap the Apple logo on the back and it's magically $600 plus dollars. Um, again, every other smartphone in the market costs the same if it's a flagship. Apple's got its own way. What's important is the experience that they deliver that's it. Uh, again, I'm not an Apple hater nor an Apple fanboy, but uh, in a balanced way, I do believe that what they do, they do right. Uh, I do feel that it's great that they have the success, but I do feel that other companies like HTC deserve it as well. Then on Wednesday, I asked you, why do you think tablet growth has slowed down as a uh, marketing analyst predict that tablets are going down, including the iPad? And we have 900 comments out of which one of them says, just the cause they're blown up versions of smartphones. Nothing new except the bigger screen. Uh, you do have a point here, um, but that's not necessarily the bad thing. See, uh, smartphones can do a lot of things, so it's great that you have a bigger canvas to be able to do things. The problem is hyping uh, you to uh, substitute your computer for a tablet where you can't really do everything in a tablet. And another commenter says, I think it's because so many people already have one and they don't see any use in upgrading to a new one. That is your case, that is my case. I find no point in upgrading this tablet, uh, mainly because I can do everything with this one that I could do with the previous one. It's not the same as with smartphones. Then Nick J says, two main reasons. One, tablets become obsolete much later than smartphones. Even after three and a half years, the iPad 2 is still a dependable gadget. Good point. 
And then the other one says phablets. When you have six inch phones, many people don't see a use for a tablet. I've been using phablets since the Galaxy Note 2, and I still feel that phablets don't really replace a tablet. But then again, I rarely use a tablet as well. Why? Because I don't consume much content. It really depends on your needs. If all you do is email and Facebook, then sure, a tablet's fine, but uh, not in my case. And carrying a computer and a tablet and a smartphone doesn't really make sense. Uh, so I partially agree with your point. Then on Thursday, I asked you, what do you think about Twitter accessing your application data to be able to cater better ads for you as those were the news? We have 298 comments out of which one of them says, I don't see a problem in Twitter having access over our data because Google has been doing this for more time than anybody else. And I don't think they will sell our direct messages or passwords at least. So just retweets and favorites and anything else is totally fine for me. You're basing this on an assumption. You don't really know if that's all they'll do, dude. And Yvonne says, Twitter, settings tap on your username on the top set Taylor Twitter based on my applications to off problem solved and I will do that after I finish recording this video thanks dude and PS fan life says I would rather pay a few bucks for no ads than irrelevant ads uh, okay uh, there are two points here first of all Twitter's trying to make ads relevant to you uh, which is not necessarily bad if I get your opinion correctly, but then on the other hand, yeah, I would rather pay to not get ads as well. And then finally on Friday, I asked you if you thought that it was a good idea for smartwatches to just be an extension of a smartphone, meaning just an accessory, as the news were that the Apple Watch uh, had just uh, been updated on its website with more details on what you can do with it, and it's pretty much like every other smartwatch out there. We have 298 comments, out of which Darshan says, yes, a Standalone smartwatch would be better. The Apple Watch is so expensive, I'd rather buy a Moto G, which will do more for me. Yes, my God, that is a good point. But then again, you're probably not in the market for an Apple Watch, or you're probably not the customer that Apple's looking for, as you would have to own an iPhone. That's the problem. And Kevin Fan says, if you can afford a smartwatch, then obviously you can afford a smartphone. All smartwatch users has a smartphone. Not a big problem for me. Um, not the case. And that's the reason why smartwatches aren't really selling much. People can afford a smartphone, true. They actually need a smartphone lately, uh, but they don't need a smartwatch mainly, and that's the reason why they don't sell. And Streetwise says, standalone smartwatches that sync with a computer or a smartphone when connected seems like the correct way to go. It makes more sense to do it that way, and yes, that is my way of thinking. What do I like about this Fitbit Flex? The fact that I don't have to have it connected to my phone for it to work. I can use it and then come back, and whenever it detects the phone, it'll sync to it, but it stores my data. I wish that smartwatches would do the same. I wish that I could use them and use all their services and just sync whatever it is that I need to sync from whatever data it picks up and not necessarily have to be connected to my phone, which is sadly the reality right now. If you remember the old days of PDAs, that's the way it was. PDAs would work on their own, but they didn't have internet connectivity easily in the early days, and you would have to sync them to computers uh, and I feel that smartwatches should be able to do that and uh, man Android Wear smartwatches have four gigs of uh, storage why not use it for that and I feel that the Apple watch has to do the same that's it for our Pocket Now Daily Recap. Thank you very much for watching. A couple of tips if you want your comments to be featured. Number one, keep them short. Number two, stick to the point. Number three, try to get some thumbs up. It helps us spot them a lot easier. You can also follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow or next week, should I say.